wanted the look of Gotham to have a recognizable texture, like a sort of New York on steroids. Between set builds, miniatures, locations, we can create a world. We have a true working set that's on the scale of a real city. The guys that we've got here have managed to build what they've built in 100 days. It had a whole river flowing through it and waterfalls. And like on the fifth day, I'd find a different section of the set. This film is a designer's dream, really. The overall turn and feel of the film is reality, but heightened reality. What does a comic suggest to you in your mind? That's the world of Gotham we're actually trying to create. We kind of realized that I needed to start designing key elements of the film to help him as he wrote. We started to develop the look of Gotham in parallel with the script development. What I wanted to do was to build up the world of Gotham as a, a sort of exaggerated contemporary New York. We've taken trips to New York. Gotham has always been based on New York and to Chicago. And we've been looking at places like the old Kowloon City in the Hong Kong. And we're really looking around, uh, you know, how we were going to go about designing a city. This is a model of what really are the slums of Gotham that I made uh, myself in, in Chris's garage. Um, Obviously, we, we pretty much went out all the way to the roof. <laughs> Having Nathan in the garage, sticking models together and just coming up with the look of the film, it just worked amazingly well and it sort of advanced our process. Visual effects are very important for being able to help create the environment of Gotham City. Chris wanted a degree of realism, which he felt he hadn't seen before in visual effects work. He really wanted to show just what a monstrously overwhelming place Gotham City is. The description in the script was that Bruce looks out of the window of his executive jet and he sees the spires of Gotham catching the first gold of dawn as the sun rises. This is a key shot for us in establishing our ability to create photorealistic landscapes for the film. We've added piers and jetties, we've added things like smoke plumes, we've got all the boats are now in the shot, and all of this was actually sourced from reality. You sort of essentially build buildings in 3D, but you map photographs onto them. So you get the shape from 3D modeling, and then you get the photographic reality from photos taken actually in Chicago. We shot something maybe like uh, close to a million photographs of this, this show, uh, sort of gathering all the possible photographic sources from Chicago. We could day and night, rain, sun, snow, the whole thing. <laughs> and so what we've got here is an aerial plate. And basically what the camera's doing is it's supposed to be following the monorail train round the corner heading towards Wayne Tower, which is going to be down at the end of the street here. The streets had to be completely clear, so the, the city has a ghostly look to it. We're going to need to make this look like this whole thing is alive. Here's our finished shot, which follows the monorail train. We've added in Wayne Tower down at the end of the street. All the vehicles you see driving across the bridges and down the road there, uh, these are all digitally created. There was a point at which we achieved a certain standard of realism on this shot. And that made Chris feel that it was possible to produce photo real cityscapes that would fit in with the rest of the photography uh, of Chicago and the big Gotham City set. In terms of looking at Wayne Manor, we've decided to represent the way the audience sees the wealth of the Wayne family, which is very important to our story. Took quite a fall, didn't we, Master Bruce? And why do we fall, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. We've chosen an approach to design that gets away from the sort of simple wood panelling and suits of armour, that kind of thing, that's become very familiar to audiences as a, as a portrayal of money. We want to show to them in a, in a fresh way, and so there is a slightly different emphasis on the look of the place and the feel of the place than, than we felt before. After seeing about 20 manor houses, we came across Mentmore, which sits about an hour and a half north of London. And what's particular about this place is it has a white interior, <laughs> which <laughs> suddenly occurred to us that because he returns some years later after his parents' death, we could really play the white interior as a mausoleum. Like the place has been closed up, and suddenly that sparked off all these ideas. Well, let's, you know, we could have everything draped and shrouded, and all the carpets rolled up, and the white marble floor exposed, and just this really unfriendly place.
imagining the Batcave, we set out to look at the origin myth as it's been portrayed in the comic book, and we were very drawn to the notion of uh, existing caverns underneath Wayne Manor rather than something that's constructed. Because it's Batman Begins, we wanted to explain who dug the Batcave, you know? <laughs> how does that work, you know? You know, how does he pour 500 million tons of concrete in, in you know, <laughs> in secret? We really wanted to explain that the Batcave isn't a man-made place. It sits under Wayne Manor, and it's a cave. Gradually, over the course of the film, we start to build up the idea of the larger world of Batman and the larger world of, of the Batcave. The Batcave was on the H stage at Shepard and Studios, and that was sort of the next garage. <laughs> the Batcave starts with rigging, then we go into wood, and then we cast these sheets, thousands of sheets. These are cast off existing rocks. Up above, you'll see those arches up there. They're basically the foundations of Wayne Manor. And we're saying this was an underground uh, lake that's drained out, so we're, we're actually building a river that runs through here. And slowly but surely, we end up with a back cave. We actually ended up flooding the whole stage because it was just easier rather than building self-contained tanks. Chris was a little bit dubious about flooding the stage, but I think after he saw the immensity of the water we put into it, he realised it was probably the best thing to do. It was a, an element where you, you got lots of reflections and twinkles that, you know, it was a dark set and that, that just brought it out and made it a living cave, really. The Bat Cave is a very realistic environment, and so my goal was to try to light it in a realistic way and keep that believability going. We're dealing with uh, black walls, uh, somewhat reflective walls, which helps quite a bit. And then we're dealing with Batman in a matte black costume, so you have to try to figure out exactly how you're going to separate one from the other. Luckily, working with my gaffer, Perry Evans, we started to crack it a little bit and figure out exactly how we were going to bring some of the light into the Batcave without seeing them, because there's a roof over much of the Batcave, and we have to find a way to sneak the light in. And then specifically lighting the first scene that Bruce Wayne sees the Batcave, in order to master your fear, you kind of have to dive into it. Bruce decides that in order to become Batman, he's going to immerse himself in the bats beneath Wayne Manor, that he's going to have to be comfortable with that before he can really become Batman. We knew we were going to have to do digital bat shots. We did an early on test trying to use real bats to see how they would play, but uh, they tend to, uh, yes, not be very cooperative. Uh, I think one day of shooting with those convinced everybody that we we're going to go digital with the bats. And then seeing bats swarming all over you. Swarming all around. We start from reality, of course. So we actually digitally scanned some dead bats to get their, their full on shape, recreate those in 3D, paint them up, texture them to make them look like real bats. In order that we can have bats fly around in there, what we actually did was use a thing called a LiDAR scanner. It's basically a laser that sweeps across the surface of objects. It's used by the military and also used in visual effects all the time now. And it records the three-dimensional shape of the, the environment. So by doing this, we can basically build a 3D version of the set. And then we can use that to sort of have the bats avoid objects and have them correspond to real objects as you photograph the plate as well. I think these days visual effects has sort of expanded its role storytelling-wise. Um, now you can do things that you couldn't do before. You can do them seamlessly, and you can do them fairly cost-effectively. And I think once he saw where we could go with that, he realized that, yes, avoiding all that back guano is definitely the way to go. We always knew we had to build a majority of the Narrows as a set, because it's something we couldn't find. So we are building a section of the Narrows for real in this giant airship hangar. When we first started looking at Cardington, I think that there was probably a certain amount of scepticism from everybody, really, because it wasn't a ready-made stage by any means. It actually took us 10 months from the moment we took over that place to the moment where we were able to shoot in there. When you are in Gotham and Cardington, you think that you are in a major city because it's so vast. It's almost like a limitless set, far and away the largest stage that I've ever worked in. It's like putting eight of the largest LA sound stages in one building. We built a model of the hangar so that we could make sure that what we were designing would fit within the hangar and would work within the space. 
big advantage here and what I think uh, the designer and director liked was the height that we've got. We've basically got 160 foot height. The set is a sort of complex series of, of areas. So you, you'll turn a corner and you're in the Narrows and you'll turn another corner, you're on a Gotham Street. And then, you know, the Gotham Street gives background to the Narrows. So it all becomes a giant set build. We've managed to build a city, an actual freeway, a, a, a borough, and then a downtown area, all in the same building. Basically, we're incorporating two parts of Gotham City, the Narrows, as it sounds, it's a very narrow part of the set, and the buildings are all overhanging, lots of balconies. It's quite a tight space to work in. And then the second part of the set, which is beyond us, further down the hangar, is really the main drag of Gotham. The main drag will have a lot of traffic in. We're looking at running, you know, maybe 50-odd cars through the set. And then under the structure itself of the hangar, uh, we've got a full freeway. So that's three lanes of traffic. Uh, running the entire length of the hangar. There's quite a lot of stuff involved with that. Obviously, we've got to work out all the road markings. The traffic lights are all wired up. A lot of the street dressing that were brought in, we actually bought in America and had it shipped across. As part of the design of the set, we've had to lay in cabling under the ground so that we can get all our steam effects up through the manhole covers and the drains. So, there's a lot of work. To me, it really is the space that looks the most like a real city night exterior, and yet we, we lit every inch of it from scratch. Because we had this fantastic indoor space, we were able to shoot during the day and make it look like night. The best approach to lighting Cardington was from the inside out. We put different color gels on the windows, we hung things inside the windows, and we brought it to a place where I think it really looks like a real city, so I'm quite proud of the way that that uh, the Narrows came out on film. Action. You know, these sets are just phenomenal, that we've built this entire city of Gotham, you know, within this vast uh, hangar here. It's a big production, but with such fine attention to uh, detail. It just gives the film a whole scope that I don't think it would have had if we were limited to a regular sized stage. Everything we did in that garage is in this film, so. That was really, really great.